this is MJ and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to work up our pig blanket. You'll need to follow along with your pattern. So the colors that I'm using for the pig is I have Bernat Softy Chunky in Baby Pink. I've also used Heather Gray. You need a ball of Heather Gray for the spots on the blanket. And for the nice contrast, I really liked this color of pink. It's Mellow Spun DK and the color is rose, but you could use any yarn you would like to work up the nose and the inner parts of the ear. I just really liked this combination. As you can see with our pig, we do have some color changes that need to happen. So first off, I'm gonna pop up my video from the horse blanket just on how to work the corner to corner stitch. So that will get you started for working most of the blanket, working corner to corner. I'm gonna also show you a little tutorial on how to change the color and looking at our graph. I don't have a color printer, so I've just printed it off like this in my directions. So basically the first section, if we look at it this way, row one, row two, row three, row four, etc. We don't have any color changes until we're at our ninth row. So to begin working our corner to corner blanket, we'll first wanna start out with a slip knot and put that on the hook and chain six. In the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, we'll work a double crochet. A double crochet in the next chain and a double crochet in the next chain. And we've made our first block and then we'll chain six. Every time we're increasing, we're gonna be chaining six. So now in the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, four, we'll work a double crochet. Yarn over. Work a double crochet. And in the last chain, a double crochet. Now we'll flip our block up like this. So just twist it up and in that starting turning chain, we're gonna slip stitch. Then we're gonna chain three, and that's first double crochet here. And then we'll work three doubles. One, two, three. So that's row two. So if we look at it from the corner, here's our first block. Here's our next two blocks for row two. So if we kind of look at it like this, one block, the next row is two blocks, and then we'll have three, four, and so on. So every time now we're increasing, we're chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll work in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. Flip up, slip stitch in that turning chain. Chain three, chain three, work three doubles, one, two, three, slip stitch into the chain three, chain three, three doubles. So we're always doing a chain three and three doubles. So as you can see, we're going to get a nice square. We look at it this way, row one, row two, row three, 
and we're just doing the same thing. We're just going to continue increasing this as large as we want the blanket to be. So let's do one more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Double crochet in the fourth chain. One, two, three, four. And in the next, and in the next. So we've made three doubles. We flip our work, slip stitch in the chain three, and chain three. Work our three double crochets. One, two, three. Slip stitch, chain three, and work three doubles. Up in the top here is our final one. We're going to slip stitch and chain three, and work three doubles. And there we go. Okay, so I want to show you without going any further and making the whole size blanket, I just want to show you what you can do if we don't have a complete square. If the blanket was a complete square, it would be really easy. We would just start decreasing each side as we go. But sometimes a blanket is more a rectangular shape. So for instance, with our horse blanket, it's going to be wider than it is tall. So we're going to have 25 blocks in height and 30 blocks in width. So let's imagine that we've reached here our 25. So this would be 25 and 25. So what we're going to do to decrease is we're going to chain three. I'm going to turn our work and we're going to slip stitch into the chain three space. Then we're going to chain three. And we're going to work three doubles. Okay, so now what we've done is we've made our corner. And now we'll slip stitch into the chain three. We'll chain three and work three doubles. So now we're working all the way down. So we're going across the same as we did before. So I'm gonna finish that off and then I'll show you what you do when you get down here. So I've slip stitched and I'm increasing it still down here. So we're increasing it another block. So here we have one, two, three, four. Here we have one, two, three, four, five. If we hadn't wanted to increase that, we could have just slip stitched and then chain three and come back over and that would continue to decrease. But we want to still increase this. So if you're still increasing the one side, we're then chaining six. Because always remember a chain six increases two, three, four, five, six. And in the fourth chain, one, two, three, four. Okay, and we flip up. Chain three. And three doubles. Okay, so now if we look at how this is looking, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and we only have four. So if you wanted this as your rectangle, you would stop increasing now at this point. And I'll show you, I'll work across and then I'll just show you again how to not increase up 
when we get here. So I've worked this block and now what we're going to do is just slip stitch to the chain three and then we're chaining three, turning and slip stitching it into the chain three. So that just gets us over into position to work this next block that goes this way. And you can see we have our edge making our rectangle piece. And at this point we could start decreasing this side and just having our blocks come in until we're down to one again. So it's a really simple pattern and it will work up really quick. So I've worked up the first part of the blanket until we get to the color changes. And then I'm gonna give you a demonstration. So you can either follow along with your chart for your color changes or you can just follow along with the written pattern. So when we get to row nine, it's the first time we're gonna have some color changes. So I'm just gonna look at the pattern. So what we're doing is we're doing the main color four. So one, two, three, I'm on my fourth. So we'll work our fourth tile. We're going to yarn over and then we won't yarn over here. We're going to pull in some of our light gray. So we're going to finish the stitch off with the light gray. Okay, so I've chained three. Now we only have one tile in the gray. So what we're going to do is carry along the pink so that we don't have to cut that. So I'm going to complete the gray tile. Okay, and then I can yarn over with the pink to finish it off. Now we're going to leave our yarn here. Slip stitch to join. And then we have four tiles to finish off this row. Okay, so you're just going to finish working across. And the next row, we're going to have two of our gray. Depending on how many you have, you may need to do some cutting and weaving in ends. If you're able to pick up and carry, go ahead and do that to save on your weaving. But depending as you get through the pattern, you may need to do some cutting and weaving. Okay, so I've worked across four tiles as the pattern has four in the main color and then we're doing two. So what we're gonna have to do here is you're gonna have to leave your pink Okay, so we're not going to carry that along because you're going to be able to see it. So you'll be joining on another pink over here, but we can pull back and hide the gray. So what we're going to do is finish off our first tile and then we're going to pull in the gray and just make sure that's pulled tight. You don't want it too loose because we're going to be covering that up. So we're going to slip stitch, chain three, and then we're going to crochet over that as we go now. So three doubles. And then slip stitch, chain three. And then work your three doubles. And then on the last one, you'll bring in a new ball of pink. So you could have a few different balls on the go as you work. Whenever you can carry, carry it through, but that may not always work for you. So you may have a few different um, balls of yarn on the go as you work. But this is basically how you change color 
and there's not too many spots throughout the pattern so you won't have a lot of color changes throughout but enough just to give the blanket an interesting look so i'll be completing my blanket off camera and then i'll be meeting you up afterwards to show you how to do the edging okay so i've completed the pig blanket and now what i'm going to do is show you how to do the edging now you can just continue right where you left off this blanket has already been fastened off and the ends woven in so in that case you can join basically in between any block and continue but if let's say you stopped here and you don't want to fasten off you're just going to chain one and then start right in that block so my largest square here for my child size is up in my upper left hand corner so I'm going to lay my blanket down so that this is the right side and I'm going to join just between these blocks here when you're doing the edging this is another way if you choose to make your blanket a little bit bigger just by doing additional rounds of edging it's going to give you a larger blanket so I'm going to single crochet into that very first space. What you'll do is chain two and then between the next block, chain two and then you'll be single crocheting. The next block chain two and we're doing this all the way around chain two going between the blocks so when I get to the corner I'm gonna meet you up so I'm coming up to my corner I'm gonna chain two and then in the corner we are going to um, work a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet in the corner. Then chain two, and then single crocheting between the blocks. Chain two, single crochet between the blocks. We're just gonna complete this all the way around. Okay, so once I get all the way around, I'm gonna slip stitch to join. So at this point, you could attach the hood. What I like to do for the hood is take, the width is wider than the length of the blanket, so your long edge, and you're going to attach the hood. You're gonna center it measure each side make sure it fits and then you're going to crochet around the blanket and the hood finishing the edge but now how the next row of edging is going to work and i'll chain one we're going to single crochet in the single crochet and then you're working two single crochet in the chain two space single crochet and then two single crochet in the chain two space so we're going to work that all the way around and once the hood is attached you're going to work right you'll keep working and then you'll go right across the hood edging as well once it's sewn on finishing that edging So in this tutorial, I'm not working through the actual hood. I have another separate video that there will be a link for to show you how to make the base hood because it follows a simple pattern that I've used in some of my other designs. Okay, so to begin, let's make a slip knot, putting that on the hook. And we'll chain nine for our child size hood. Now 
Now we'll be working extended single crochets in this pattern. If we were using our larger hook and yarn that's bulkier, um, like Sprightly or Lion Brand wool acrylic, uh, we wouldn't need to do extended single crochets, but because I'm using the smaller hook and our Bernat Softy Chunky, we'll be working extended single crochets. So in the second chain from the hook, there's one, two, we'll work an extended single crochet. So go through, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, and just work down the chain in the extended single crochet. And in our final chain, we'll add two. Okay, so our final chain, add two. So now we'll be working down the opposite side of our chain, which is this here. So we're basically just turning and now we're adding two extended single crochets into that first. Pull your tail there and crochet over this tail as we go. And then working down the chain one extended single crochet in each of the next seven. So in total, you should have 18 extended single crochet stitches. Nine on the first side and nine on the next side. Okay, and now we'll turn and chain one. So we're working in an oval shape. This is the back of the hood. And so for row two, we'll work one extended single crochet in the first stitch, and then in each of the next six. So there's one. two, three, four, five, and six. And now we'll work two extended single crochet in each of the next four stitches. So there's one, and then going right back down into that same stitch, we'll work another one. Two in the next. Two in the next. And then two in the next. Okay, so then we've increased here by four stitches. And now there should be seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just work extended single crochets down in each remaining stitch. Okay, so now we'll turn at the end of the row. So we will have in that um, row two, 22 stitches, because we increased by four. So now row three, We'll chain one, we'll work one extended single crochet in the first, and one in each of the next seven, so a total of eight. One, two, three. So I've worked a total there of eight, and then now in the next six, we're gonna do two in each 
increasing this row by six stitches. So we work one and then we go right back down in the same stitch working another. And we do that in each of the next six. Okay. Okay, so I've worked two in each of the next six and now you should have eight stitches remaining and we'll work one extended single crochet in each of those remaining stitches and just work all the way down. So now we've gone from 22 to 28 stitches. We're going to turn and begin uh, row four. Row four we won't do any increases. We'll just work one extended single crochet in every stitch for a total of 28. And I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so I've already chained one and turned. This is how your piece should be looking. And we're gonna do another increase. So now we'll work one extended single crochet in the first and then we'll work one extended single crochet in each of the next nine. So that's a total of 10. So work across your 10 and then I'll meet you for the increases. Okay, so now in the next eight stitches, we'll work two. So we're increasing by eight stitches. So work two all in the same stitch in the next eight. So we've got two in the second, two in the third, and just keep repeating those increases in a total of eight of the stitches. Okay, and so it's normal for this section here to look a little wavy. It's okay, because as we work our non-increase rounds, that will smooth that out. So now you should have 10 stitches remaining. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and just work one extended single crochet in each of those stitches across. So now we've gone from 28 to 36 stitches, and that is the, this is the last increase row that we'll do. The rest of the hood now, we just work one extended single crochet in every stitch. And then as we keep doing rows, the hood will take its shape. So at this point, this is how we look. It's a little wavy at the top. But now all we do is just keep working one extended, so starting row six, one extended single crochet in every stitch. Across. Okay, so after row six, it should already start to be smoothing out a little bit. And then as we work our rows, we're gonna get this hood curving over. Now I've just marked row six. Sometimes it can be hard to count. If you're finding it tricky to count your rows as you go, just so that you can keep track of your rows as you go, making sure you have about 17. So 17 should get us a decent overhang of our hood. Let's chain one and turn, but that can also be altered. You could, um, have have a little bit more if you need it. I'm gonna work this through with this yarn sometimes between different colors. The hood, the texture is a little bit different. Some can work up a bit bigger. So I'm gonna go through and work up my total of 17 rows and see how I like the size of the hood. So all we're doing is just working one extended single crochet in every stitch across. 
That's it, no more increases. So now I'm at row seven. So an additional 10 rows on top of this. So this I'm gonna work now off camera. You can pause the video and I'll work up my 17 rows and then I'll meet you back up. Okay, so I've worked up 17 rows. So I'm now ending here on my right side. So it has a nice finished edge. Now, just so you can kind of get an idea of the measurements, I fold it over at about that sixth row, okay? So that we're, that's where it was pretty even at the back. And we should overhang about seven inches. And if we measure from the back, it's about eight and a half. So depending on the pattern, if the hook size is a little bit different, it may vary a little bit from pattern to pattern, but this is about the size that we're going for. Some of them measure about nine at the back for a child. And it's about 20 inches in, in width. And that can slightly vary from pattern to pattern but getting about seven inches for the face of the hood is a good size for a child. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, show you how to make one of our little hoops for our pig. It's really simple and easy to make, so I'm gonna work through that with you. We're using our nine millimeter hook. and our main color yarn. So we're just gonna make a magic circle. So wrap that yarn around your index finger three times. You're gonna come through and pull through the first. We're gonna chain two and work nine half double crochet in the ring. So now once you have the nine, I like to just pull my work out of the way and start to pull my tail, okay? You'll see that one loop starts pulling in, but the other loop doesn't. So you're gonna take the loop that's pulled in, pull it, and it will pull the other loop. And then just take your tail, and now you've made a nice tight circle. And we'll just slip stitch in the top stitches here of our first half double crochet to join chain two and then in every stitch around we're going to work two half double crochets so that's increasing us from nine stitches up to 18 stitches so that's increasing us from nine stitches all the way up to 18 stitches so yarn over and in that very first stitch we're not including the chain two as a stitch here we'll work two two half doubles And follow along with your pattern if you're making the adult size, it will be a little bit larger than this. So I'm gonna work that off camera and then I'll meet you up. And once you've worked around, we're gonna slip stitch again into the top of that first stitch. And then we're gonna chain one. So this here is what we've worked. And now we're gonna start working in the back loop and it's gonna give us this ridge and give us this shape that we're looking for, okay? So we're gonna work in the back loop only. If you take a look at your stitch, you wanna go down through the center of the stitch. Okay, and we're gonna just push through. So we're only going through the back loop and we'll work a single crochet. So we'll do that all the way around and we'll be staying at the 18 stitches that we increase to. So I'll complete that off camera. And once we've worked all the way around, we're gonna slip stitch to join. 
chain one, and then just working through now the full stitch. So no back loop only, just the full stitch. We're gonna work single crochets all the way around. And row four will be repeated till we finish our hoof mitten for our pig. And you could decide to do this in another color if you wanted, but looking at most pigs, they're usually their feet really blend in with their body. So I've just continued doing it in the pink. Okay, so I've completed round four, and now we're gonna work a total of 10 rounds. So round five through 10 is just gonna be a repeat of round four. So that's it. So you just keep working in rounds, and then this is what it's gonna look like. And when I attach it, I do like to give it a little pinch right here. You can even give it a little stitch just to hold that shape. But I'm gonna continue working this one off camera and then I'll meet you up when, I'm when I've completed it. And again, this is just what it looks like when you're done. And you wanna make sure you keep your yarn to the side, because when we seam this to the blanket, we wanna just use this long tail, fasten off with a long tail, and then we'll just be seaming the one side to the blanket so you can put your little, they, your children can put their little hand in there. And you could make it longer if you wanted to but the pattern just calls for a total of 10 rounds. Okay, so really easy way to give the illusion of your little mitten here having toes is just to give it a little pinch. Take the yarn needle with that inside ed and, ugh, end and just, you can just pinch this together. And that's just going to give us more that illusion of those toes there. And you can just weave in that end. If you want to do that before you sew it on, And then when you sew on your mitten, you want the right side of your blanket now with where you have your toe shape. So the right side's facing. You're just gonna line up the edges Okay, so that's it. I'm just gonna weave my end in and then that is finished. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna work on is the pig ear. You wanna go down to the smaller hook size for the ear. So I'm using the 6.5 millimeter. This is the shape it looks like when you're finished. Okay, so we're gonna begin by chaining two. And we'll work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Chain one and turn. We'll work two. In the stitch. Chain one and turn. We're going to work two in the first stitch. And we're going to work two in the next stitch. So we've now increased to four stitches. We'll chain one and turn, and then we'll just work one single crochet in every stitch across. Chain one and turn. 
we're going to increase again. So the pattern is going to be we're going to increase and then we're going to do a non-increase. Increase, do a non-increase. So we'll increase, work one in the next two, and then increase in the final stitch. So now we have six stitches. We'll chain one in turn, and then we just work one in every stitch across. chain one and turn and now we'll add two in that first stitch work one in every stitch across till we get to the last stitch and then in the last stitch we'll do two chain one and turn work one single crochet in every stitch across So we've got eight stitches, chain one and turn. We're increasing again. So two in the first, work one across, and then in the last, we'll do two again. We'll work one in every stitch across. I finished with two in my last stitch. So one, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this will be our last increase. So we'll chain one and turn, and we're going to increase now to 12 stitches. So two in the first, work across, and we'll add two in the last. We'll chain one and work one single crochet in every stitch across. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is start doing some decreases because we wanna get this curve shape happening. So our next row, we're gonna do a decrease. So a single crochet, two tog. We're gonna go through the first stitch, pull up a loop, go right in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Work across to the last two stitches. Okay, so I have two stitches and then we'll do another tog. Okay, so we've combined those two stitches together. So now you should have 10 stitches. Chain one and turn. We'll work one in every stitch across. Okay, chain one and turn and we're gonna do another tog. So go through the stitch up a loop, go through the next stitch, and pull through. Work across. And same thing, do another tog. So now we're down to eight stitches. We'll chain one and turn. And we're going to finish here with another decrease. So we're going to pull up a loop, pull up the next loop. And decrease the final two. So now we have six stitches, but we're going to continue now to complete the edge so we have this nice beautiful edge going around the ear. So you can chain one, we'll work one, and I just like to kind of keep track as I go just how many stitches so I can equal them on the other side. So one,
Okay, so I have 14, and then what I'm gonna do in the tip is I'm gonna do three. Pull that, and then I'm gonna aim as I go down to have another 14. And then when I get to the bottom, I'm just gonna slip stitch in that first stitch. So I'm not gonna go across again. I'm just gonna slip stitch right down here. to finish that off. And then you can just fasten off with a long tail so that you have yarn to sew to the hood. Okay, so next is gonna be the tail for the pig. So it's a really nice curly um, tail and I've just left two strands so it's easy to tie it to the back of the blanket. Now you can go ahead and make it shorter or longer whatever but I'm going to show you how to do the size that I've made. So what you want to do is start it with a slip knot, put that on your hook. So we're using the nine millimeter crochet hook and we're going to chain out 16. And just make sure those chains aren't too tight. Now what we'll do in the third chain from the hook is work three half doubles. And in the next chain, three half doubles. And in the next chain, three half doubles and so on. So every chain you put three half doubles and you just work all the way along and then it's just gonna keep curling. And as you work, like you may just wanna help um, twist it as you go there to make sure that you get that nice curve. But that's all you're gonna do is work down your entire chain, working three half doubles in each chain and then fasten off and you are done. Okay, so really easy way to give the illusion of your little mitten here having toes is just to give it a little pinch. Take the yarn needle with that inside ed and, ugh, end and just you can just pinch this together. And that's just gonna give us more that illusion of those toes there. And you can just weave in that end. You want to do that before you sew it on. And then when you sew on your mitten, you want the right side of your blanket now with where you have your toe shape. So the right side's facing. You're just going to line up the edges.
Okay, so that's it. I'm just gonna weave my end in and then that is finished.